G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, we've got Vortex, who is playing as the French, opening us up with a little bit of an early scout build order. His opponent who spawns on the opposite side of the map, playing on, as the Mongols in the color red. It is the Mister, and he's found a very nice spot here between a gold mine, between a uh, between some some trees. He's looking pretty decent. Uh, just going to be going for the, some villagers today and dropping down his early Uvu, which is also quite close to his town center. So he's going to be happy with that. Nice and defensive. Now, for anybody who is unaware, this is part of N4C. It's part of the third bracket uh, final that is happening. So this is the Mister versus Vortex. And I think we're on to game number four. So if you don't want the event spoiled or if you don't want the previous three games spoiled, then I encourage you to go back and watch them now because they are the previous three videos that were uploaded on the channel. And... Spoiler alert, here it comes. The last game was won by Vortex, so the score is currently 2-1. So this is King of the Hill, and typically the civilization that you see on this map is Delhi. I think you also kind of see a bit of China, a bit of Holy Roman Empire. It can vary, it can vary, but the, I think the French are also a pretty popular pick here. Uh, Vortex obviously picking up the French here. Uh, part of the reason why I think the French are very strong is just because of their castle game. You want to make castles as the French and the French... Or you want to make castles as the French and you want to make castles on this map. There's only one, one sacred site that is in the middle. So it makes it very, very easy to, to get control, to win, and to hold it. So it is, uh, it's a smart move. But we'll take a look at how Vortex is, uh, is unfolding as he opens up with the double scout. So you can see he's got plenty of sheep. Look at that. He has secured up 12 sheep. So he found the triple double out on both sides here. And he just feels really good about himself because I would too. That is, a, that is an absolute prize that he's managed to achieve there. And it's going to make it very difficult for Mister. You take a look at Mister. Mister right now has got a single sheep uh, following his Khan. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. There's <laughs> his closest food source is all the way back here. Look at how far away his closest food source is. It, it's probably just going to be easier. Just lure the boar and like bring it up to here and kill it there. And just long distance. <laughs> Jeez Louise, it's not looking pretty for Mister, is it? Oh my lord. Opening us up with a very early pasture, you can see. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually looks to chop out a couple more. Uh, maybe even get a few more villagers over onto wood uh, just to get those up. And it looks like that's exactly what we're going to see right now as he drops down a second pasture at two minutes. Is this the new Mongol build order that we're seeing right now? Uh, probably not. I mean, it could be. Early pastures have always been a little bit of a thing uh, for the Mongols, but um, not necessarily because they have to, but because they want to. In this case, though, Mister definitely looks like he has to. Still yet to find a an extra uh, an extra lamb, but look at this behind the base of Mister Vortex actually finding three sheep again. Oh, he's not having a fun game, Mister, is he? Jeez, you t I tell you what, man, when it when it hits you, it hits your heart, doesn't it? But um, we've got the, the School of Cavalry now going up nice and safe here next to the town center. Uh, always want to be cognizant of your placement for a landmark like this. You want to make sure that it's uh, it's relatively safe. If you leave it too far forward, it can always be somewhat exposed to archer fire or, or those suppressing archers that do happen. But uh, Vortex opening up. He's got the lumber mill out towards the north. No mill coming down just yet, but from the way he's macroing, you'd expect he's probably not going to be going for that mill. Normally, you'd want a few more. Well, I think one more villager on... on don't, don't mind me. Uh, up in the... <laughs> up in the north. Up in the north, we've got the uh, landmark coming down here for the Mister. Mister dropping down his deer stone. It's got five villages on that bad boy. So he has managed to get up to the next age uh, with the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> with the, the terrible start that he's had. This is probably one of the worst starts I've ever seen. It was looking really good for the mister. Like, he managed to find, um, you know, a gold mine next to the, the wood line. It was a really good town center placement. He's got his uvu that's close by. So if he needs pastures, he can put them down. And then he actually needed pastures because he had no freaking sheep. This is one of the worst starts I've e ever seen easily. Uh, one of the good things to note, though, is all of his food is very centrally located so when it comes to actually defending it now obviously he doesn't have walls so he's not going to be able to stick a, a nice little wall across these choke points but you can see that he's got a, his first hunt first berries second berries third berries and second hunt so he's got five stacks of food all very closely very tightly compacted and he, he is he knows that they're all there he knows exactly uh, what is was happening. Uh, so he knows he's just going to need to defend that little piece of land. He's obviously got the gold mine out here as well. So if he wants to get a Gur out here, not going to be too much of a difficulty. Uh, but obviously got the gold mine on his town center as well. So he's not going to be too fast. Stable going to be going down in the transition period for Mister. 
His opponent, Vortex, has aged up already. Got the Knight coming out. Uh, we do have professional scouts on the way as well. So it is a, a pretty typical opening that you would expect to see out of a French player like this. And i got to say, I, I like the position that Vortex is in. Uh, the fact that he hasn't gone up against the Tower Rush is really what's helped him out here. But I think that that's a consequence of the map as well. So in this situation, Mister has picked the Mongols on a rather closed map. Um, and, you know, typically on a map like this, you would see the Holy Roman Empire, the Chinese, the Delhi, but we've got or well, the French as well. Uh, but you've got the Mongols. And I, I definitely feel on a closed map like this, the Mongols are a civilization that doesn't get the you know the full advantage of its bonuses so as an example you can very easily wall the mongols out so they can't do those cheeky little raids that they love to do so it's very easy to wall on a map like this um and, and very easy to control the narrative you know often i talk about this concept of controlling the narrative it means about preventing your enemy from attacking you where you don't want them to so you control the story you say no we're gonna fight over here and then so you get those walls out but now speaking of walls well i mean not really speaking of walls because they're, they're spears but i mean <laughs> Do you hear that little snort? Oh god, that snort. It was a bit of a chortle, wasn't it? And <laughs> he just starts attacking a wolf, heading back in. Vortex now needs to be careful. That scout is actually going to be a professional very shortly. Needs to be careful with the barracks going to get dropped down. I thought he was dropping down a stable here. Did he move that around? Surely not. That was, I'm 100% sure that was a stable he was dropping down. I might have been a bit confused, or maybe I was just looking at the wrong one. Who knows? Anyway, i uh, going to be adding in that third pasture now. This Mongol macro looking very, very nice. I'm going to just get a nice little shot of that. Look at that beautiful Mongro, Mongro, Mongol base uh, that we've got going on. Uh, but uh, towards his opponent's base, the spears are beginning to go up. But, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't really going to be able to achieve much. He's out here. He's, he's got the spears. And I feel like he doesn't have too much of a plan. And honestly, that kind of hurts as the Mongols. Typically, the, 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 the big plan that you would have as the Mongols is tower rush into fast castle. It seems to work. Not, like, it, it's, it's, it's that famous quote. 60% of the time, it works every time. Uh, which is true. You know, 60% of the time, it does work every time. He had an exposed gold out over here, but it just comes back down to the length of the map. And to be honest, like you can walk through the middle of the map down towards this position. Uh, but when you open up with your car, it's a very difficult thing to do. Typically, you want to go for the towards these extremities, out towards these sides, because that's where those extra sheep are. And that's what you're looking for. And now we begin to see Vortex walling up the passageways. And uh, once again... Uh, you know, it actually seems like I might have got something right this game. We can see he's got a nice little wall coming down here. So I've uh, I've, I've managed to predict the walls, uh, not so much the mill. <laughs> but um, he's going to begin working towards bringing in these deer. So he's actually got some pretty far out deer here. He'll probably have a, have a nice little uh, gate in here. But beginning to build up a pretty decent composition here. Going to be going up against the melee composition that we do like to see. Uh, this is very typical amongst Chinese players and very typical amongst the Mongol players. Uh, so they go the full melee composition. So mass spears, mass horseman uh still doesn't have the horseman upgrade so these are still early horsemen now finally coming through uh and it looks like we've got the movement speed arrow that has come off maneuver arrow indeed going to be the way that it goes and now mister looking to try and put the hurt on towards his opponent vortex going to be running back not a lot of screening coming in from these knights doing a little bit of damage to himself there almost running in but we can see the archers begin to separate now heading towards that wood line the villagers are going to have to evacuate another archer does go down he's managed to lose one two three four five six archers only two spears have gone down so a very nice trade there for mister he is happy with that one. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's not necessarily about getting those efficient trades, in my opinion. It's more about getting up to that third age and being able to capitalize on that victory. So we'll have to we'll have to see how Mr. does it. And uh, let me change that. There we go. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious to see how the Mr. is going to do it. You can see behind this, he is definitely thinking about going up to the castle age. Got a couple of idols there that have managed to be picked up. But you can see he's got the three, uh, the three pastures out. I don't actually know how many villages are required per pasture, but I think it's something like two, two pasture or two villages are supported by one pasture on an uvu or something like that. But uh, now those royal knights going to be coming out. You can see the spears actually bracing for them. They managed to make their way back to safety, and uh, Vortex going to be pulling in those deer two by two, at least yeah, two by two at the moment. Uh, so only got the the two scouts out. Uh, but, I mean, that's realistically all you need. Honestly, two deers coming in, or two scouts collecting deer at a time uh, is all you need. And the, the fact that you've got deer on both sides of your base mean that if your enemy comes in on the left side, then you take from the right side. If they come in from the right side, you take from the left side, which is exactly what's happening here. So we see Vortex actually coming in and trying to pick up his carcasses. You know what? He's just going to do it. He's got... Oh, he's got to be careful there, little Vortex. He manages to make his way back through the wall. The scout takes a bit of damage. But don't worry, he's a scout. He'll heal that stuff up. But uh, now on the other side of the map, it looks like Mister going to be dropping down that landmark that's stepped out. Going to be the one that goes 
down. Um, and uh, we will expect that he'll be aging up probably within the next minute, though. It does look like he's not particularly urgent about it. Only six villagers on it, adding in a second stable. So going to be looking towards that Lancer play. It's something that we do see quite often uh, out of Mongol players where they will just go into full Lancers. Uh, and, and essentially, the play style is just only Lancers, so you don't make any spears. And um, the difficult thing for the French player is that he has to just make Lancers as well because you don't really want to invest in veteran spears. Obviously, you can invest in veteran spears, but it, it becomes a very difficult game. Uh, but now it looks like the wood line on the front has almost run out. He's just got a couple of trees that remain in there. Uh, it looks like Vortex does actually scout out those uh, those horsemen. And a huge amount of uh, villagers back here on wood. So Vortex still yet to really think about getting up to the next stage. A little bit of a macro mistake. It can happen sometimes. When you move a large amount of villagers out onto a wood line like this, uh, they will all just begin chopping. So you can see there's three to a tree. Uh, and you can actually fit a lot more villagers on there. But it's just the way that the AI works. It's a little bit silly when it allocates. So you'd probably just want to bring these guys in and just right-click them over here. And then they'll do the same thing on the next line of trees. But uh, always something to be careful of because uh, at the end of the day, it, it does hurt you. Now, one of the other interesting things to note is that Vortex has brought his army back here. So if you take a look at Vortex's base, where is he exposed? Where does he have risk? And the answer is that it, it is absolutely not up here. He's got a wall protecting him from this perspective. He's got full line of sight over here. So if he does see any enemy units... Scout going to go down. Uh, if he does see any enemy units coming in from that angle, he's going to be able to pull his villagers back in time. But he didn't have anything down here protecting them. So he made sure he brought his units down. Royal Knight's going to continue chasing out. We did see Mister has reached the third age as well. So we'll check in on him as we see that Deerstone's getting pushed up in the middle of the map. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see... Where is it? Improved Siege Engineering. It's not in yet. That's a bit weird. That's a weird champ right there. Um, normally by 12 minutes, you'd expect to see the uh, Improved Siege Engineering in. But uh, now these spears are going to be finding some archers in the middle of the map. Do we have those double lancers coming out? We've got double lancer production coming out. We don't actually have the double lancers just yet. Not enough resources for them. But he manages to find them. Keep in mind, he's got the uh, yam network. It's going to be incre increasing the movement speed here. Uh, do we have veterancy coming through for either of these uh, either of these buildings? It doesn't look like it, so he's got the option for it. It is very expensive, though, and is going to have that double production coming in. We see doing double men at arms here. He's identified that men at arms are the correct choice, which which is true. The Lancer is also a correct choice. I mean, any, any armored unit, but now it looks like Vortex committing to the second age. And now the age-old question, age 2 aggression versus age 3 tech, which one is going to win? And you want to know the truth? I don't know. That's why it's an age-old question. Uh, <laughs> Mangonels yet to be on the table for either player at this stage, obviously. Uh, we haven't seen Mr. head towards that improved siege engineering. It actually just looks like he's going for plus two uh, range defense. Second battering ram going to be coming out now for Vortex and Vortex looking to push the agenda. We can see the way he's doing it. It looks like we've got ourselves a defense uh, arrow being thrown up here. We've got the men at arms out for, trying to fight their best. Spears getting great connections here with the majority of these Royal Knights but you can see the way he's microing these archers back. A nice little block eight. He's managed to build up over here with the uh, the battering ram and slowly but steadily it actually looks like the army of Vortex still manages to survive. He's got these uh, lancers coming in fighting up against the Royal Knights and one would assume that the reinforcement Enforcements that are going to continue to come in are going to really assist here, but do note the battering ram is working on those reinforcements. And it looks like we've just had a tap out. Vortex has just tapped out. He has been eliminated. He has been completely cleaned up by the mister, and he realizes that he can't actually win the game. Good game goes over to him. Evens up the series two to two. Fellas, thank you so much for watching. I'll make sure to catch you guys in the next one. It's going to be an absolute blast.